Hi, I'm Semen Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Step-by-Step -step Feedback Design of a Makeshift Buffer Amplifier or LDO it can be used. This is a tutorial. I'm using in this design the idea and approach of 1 over beta. If you are not familiar with it, I highly recommend that you look up this video. Here's the link and I'm going also to print the link at the description section of the video that you are now watching. I'm using this idea or this approach, but I'm not explaining it in this presentation. So if you are not familiar, please have a look at this video. Now the objective of this presentation is to explain and demonstrate a recommended feedback design procedure for analog circuits. And also I'm going to demonstrate the use of LTSPI simulation for obtaining the open and closed loop transfer function. Again, the approach is based on the 1 over beta method. Please have a look at it if you are not familiar with this approach. Now I'm considering this circuit. Here we have an operation amplifier, a BJT transistor, and for say LDO type operation for a constant voltage, uh, we might like to have a large capacitor. So I'm considering the case in which we have here say 10 microfarads. So this is the basic circuit that I'm going to analyze and also to develop a feedback loop or phase compensation for this circuit. Just for demonstration, I've chosen this operation amplifier, OP727. It's a basic amplifier with a unity gain at uh, one megahertz, a roll off of 20 dB per decade, therefore the phase is 90 degree. And also it's uh, fairly slow, uh, 0.2 volts per second of slow rate. I've chosen this class of amplifiers because if I have a 10 microfarad capacitor, the bandwidth is going to be fairly narrow, so there is no need for very, very high bandwidth say, amplifier. So we have here basically two blocks here you might say, this one and this one. This is the operation amplifier, here it is. And then we have this BJT loaded by the 10 microfarad. Now the phase shift of this one is 90 degree and here expected transfer function is the first order, at least for the low frequency of course. And uh, then we are going to have a breakpoint at a fairly low frequency because of the 10 microfarad. Now, a system like this, there is a feedback here, so that the total phase shift could, be, could approach uh, 180 degrees. So this system is really prone to instability, at least uh, overshoots, uh, if not oscillations. So here is the circuit. We have operation amplifier, BJT, 10 microfarad. Now, if I run it as it is, simulation as it is, a large signal with a step function at the input. Here is what I'm getting. This is the step function and the green is the output. You see there is a quite a bit of an overshoot. It's not oscillating because of probably because of a very large capacitor, but so clearly it's an indication of a very small phase margin in which, which is causing this uh, large overshoot. So our objective, of course, is to make this response nice so that the overshoot and undershoot will be accepted. Now the topology that I'm going uh, to explore and the approach that I'm showing here is using this type of a feedback around the operation amplifier. This actually makes the operation amplifier to work in closed loop. Okay, This is the idea here, such that here we have a controlled transfer function in terms of gain and phase so we can match it to what is available here at the BJT section so as to make the whole system stable with the phase margin that we want and a bandwidth that we can get. So we have two units here. I'll call this one A, this one B or beta. It has a transfer function here, closed loop. This one has an open loop transfer function of the BJT loaded by the 10 microfarad. And of, obviously uh, this system could be unstable and the instability will be due to too small a phase margin. And in order to design it, I have to 
first of all know what is this transfer function and also then to trim this transfer function so that the total feedback or the loop gain will be proper. Now what does it mean proper? Again, in the 1 over beta approach, it's a very simple approach, very intuitive. In this approach, we plot the block that we know all about. In this case, it will be the BJT transfer function. We plot it here. This is the transfer function of the BJT. And then the other one that we are looking for, or the one that we have to design the compensation network for it, we plot 1 over the transfer function, 1 over beta, okay? And as shown in this uh, video, we can now cross the A with the 1 over beta here or here. The key here is that we have to cross it such that the so-called rate of closure, this is this angle here, represents a 20 dB per decade. Here it is, and also here it is because this goes down to 20 dB. So this is 20 dB per decade. And then once we decide on which way to go, then we can go on with the actual design of the phase compensation of this uh, part, which is still to be designed. So the first thing is, of course, to get the transfer function of the BJT stage, which we are not touching, of course. We just, we need to know what is the transfer function. And I've here put a 10 microfarad, 0.1 microfarad, and then added some parasitics to it. And I'm now running AC simulation with LT spice. And here is what I'm getting. As expected, we see that the transfer function is of first over. This is about 20 dB per decade. The phase starts with zero because this is a follower. The BJT stage is actually a follower, a meter follower. And then we have zero degree and then it starts to go down. Here, since it is minus 20 degrees per decade, then it will approach 90 degrees. But then we have all the parasitic, which are causing extra phase shift and uh, resonant. We are not interested in this region here. So as I've said, there are actually two possibilities, two, I'd say, practical possibilities. One to cross here with this one over beta, one to cross here. There is another or a third possibility with this sort of class 3 compensation in which the 1 over beta will go like this. I'm not going into it. The, the circuit is simple, so I'm either will use this one or this one. Now, as far as this, uh, this possibility, then we need a gain, which is beta. 1 over beta is about, let's say, 20 dB. So we need a gain of 10 at this frequency. Now looking at the data sheet of this operation amplifier, although we can find this information directly from the transfer function, from the open loop transfer function, but we can also use this uh, information. This is a closed loop transfer function and what we see here is that the bandwidth that you can get is a function of the gain. That is, the higher the gain, the narrower the bandwidth and for 10 uh, minus 10, this is the inverting configuration, and this is exactly what we need. We see that we can get a bandwidth of about uh, 20 kilohertz, but it, uh, of course here we already have some phase shift, okay? Well, so we would like to work somewhere here. So if I'm going back here, uh, this is the 20 kilohertz, so the amplifier will have a problem supplying this gain, and here uh, we have only one kilohertz. So this seems to be a better choice in our particular application. Now, obviously the bandwidth will be smaller, but well, there is no free lunch. If you like to have a larger phase margin, normally it means that the bandwidth will be smaller. Again, in this particular application, this seems to be okay. So the idea is then to close this loop such that the 1 over beta will cross the A transfer function in the proper point. And of course, we have to select this component and a sort of reasonable selection will be something of this nature. What we have here is a so-called lag lead, lead lead compensation network, or if you want class two compensation network. And what it is, is really a 
integrator at low frequency when the impedance or the resistance of R sub F is smaller than the impedance of the capacitor, this is an integrator. So we have a sort of a drop 20 dB per decade of the gain. And then at high frequency, when this capacitor has an impedance lower than this RF, then of course we have a constant gain, which is RF over RN in the range that the amplifier is still functioning okay. So this seems to be to fulfill the requirement that we want. Let me just go back to this plot here. And the idea is then to cross the A block or transfer function with one over beta here. But I like also to have here again a constant gain because I don't want to go to a higher frequencies here. I like sort of to limit and to close the loop of the amplifier, not to leave it open with a short uh, capacitor. So rather than sort of uh, leaving this thing open here, I like to sort of uh, determine the gain here. This is one over beta, so it will be like a certain attenuation as a matter of fact. So I like to have this constant gain at the higher frequency at about say 20 dB above the uh, crossover. Again, this is one over beta. After deciding what is the topology that I'm going to use, then it's time to actually calculate the values of this. We have here actually a degree of freedom because uh, we have information about the crossover frequency here. This is the crossover frequency and the gain. So we have uh, this information. And however, we have another variable. We have three variables or three parameters that we can choose. And so therefore we have a degree of freedom and I choose the R in as a degree of freedom that I'll determine its resistance. And by this, I can fix the range of the units or the magnitude of the component that is that the resistances and capacitance will be in reasonable range. So here it is. I am choosing R in as 10K. This is the transfer function of the system. And when we are in the integrator mode, it's just this transfer function. It's one, the impedance here is one over two pi FC. So the crossover is when this is one because we cross it here. This is the beta. This is one over beta. This is the zero dB. Let's go back for a second just to clarify. Here it is. We are crossing here. So this is zero dB. So we need a gain of one at this frequency for the system. And if I choose 10K for hour in, again, it's a degree of freedom, then I'll get that uh, for the crossover of one kilo and gain of one, this is the capacitance, 16 nanofarad. And from the gain that I want at the higher frequencies, and the gain is RF over R in, it's a 0.1, so it's minus 20 dB, which brings us to R sub F is 1K. So we have everything. So here is now a simulation schematics, LT spice, which already has these components. This is the BJT. And I've added here a AC source for AC transfer function that I can use it for AC transfer function. Also, I've added here a step function for the time domain simulation. And also I've added here a current source for injecting a current as a load to see the load regulation. Okay. So first of all, let's have a look at some of the transfer function. And I'll start with the, first of all, transfer function of what we have seen before between gate, between base and out, okay? And then I'm going to see the transfer function from here to here. This is the B or beta. And actually I'm going to plot one over beta. So here it is. This is what we have seen before. This is the BJT transfer function. This is the one over beta of the operation amplifier with the values that I've calculated. We see the crossover or the intersection at one kilohertz, exactly as we predicted. I mean, there's no magic here. Uh, this is just uh, showing us the result of our calculation. And then I have here a constant gain at um, 
about 20 dB. This is one over beta, so it's a attenuation of 20 dB. So everything looks very, very nice. So let's have a look at the loop gain. This is now the total loop gain of the system. We see a unity gain at 1 kHz, as would be expected. And we see the fade. The fade is about 90 degree. It's a little bit uh, higher than that, meaning that the phase margin is perhaps 80 or 70, which is okay. So let's see how does it perform in the time domain. I have here an input step of 0.1 volt between 5 and 5.1, and the green one is the response. You see, uh, this here is uh, 10 millivolt per division here, and therefore we are talking about uh, what one or two millivolt, very, very nice. And here we see also the response of the system to the current pulse, it's a 50 milliamp pulse, 20 microsecond, and we see here a drop of about uh, 20 millivolt, which is okay uh, considering the bandwidth of the system. And here, when the step is one volt, again, overshoot is very nice, very acceptable. You see here now, in this uh, scale that indeed the response for the load is really pretty good. And now I'm comparing what we got here to what we have seen in the case in which there is no phase compensation uh, with the overshoot and oscillation. Here is what we got with the feedback and here is the original without phase compensation and obviously the improvement is, is very clear here. So now what about the large signal time domain response between input and output? So I'm feeding now a sinusoidal waveform starting with 100 Hertz and we see the input and output one on the top of the other and as you can see it's very nice in terms of the gain and the distortion, 1 kilohertz, this is on the verge of the bandwidth that we have, still pretty good, pretty good, and then as I jump to 10 kilohertz, then of course we are beyond the bandwidth, and not only that the amplitude is lower, then we get distortion, and this is of course uh, very reasonable with this system. Now what about the output impedance? This is very important, if uh, we are considering uh, the system or the circuit as a voltage source, a LDO, uh, we want to load to, <coughs> we want to feed say a subsystem which is switching, so we need a low impedance so as to capture and shorten the pulses. I'm getting this response by AC analysis here, injecting into the output a current through this current source, the magnitude is 1, okay, 1 amp, so that the voltage that we'll get here actually represent the impedance in ohms. In this case, of course, this is not functioning, it's zero, and this is also not uh, functioning well. In AC analysis, this is uh, shorted out. So what we see here is very typical of a output impedance of a closed loop system feedback system. At low frequency, when the loop gain is high, then the output impedance is low, because the output impedance is about the output impedance without feedback over 1 plus beta A or 1 plus the loop gain. So when the loop gain is very high, the impedance is low, and then we are here sort of losing the feedback, in fact, and what we see here is practically the output impedance of the stage, of the BJT stage by itself. And then we can see the effect of the capacitor. As the frequency goes up, the impedance, of course, of the capacitor, one microfarad goes down and down. And then we have all these parasitics here in this range, which again is uh, typical of a practical or physical system. So this brings me to the end of this uh, presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.